Yo guys, what is up? This is Skelmas from Menu Docs coming back at you with Discord.py episode 3. Embeds and errors. So right off the bat, today we're just gonna have a chat about some error handling and introducing embeds which are quite a nice way to send information in an aesthetically pleasing way. So scrolling down, we're going to make a variable that's accessible via the bot scope. So essentially this is just going to be an attribute of bot and so the way this works is instead of using a global variable if you make it an attribute of the bot object then wherever the program can see the bot it can see the bot version and so i'm just going to set it to a naming scheme which is major minor and then just more pushes which is uh, 0.0.3 or if I want to just go to uh, let's say 3 I'll just set it to 3 for now and so we're just going to use it in our new statistics command but the th first thing you'll notice is actually our on command error which is a new bot event that we're introducing today and so this is a bot.event and it passes in the ctx which is context and the error itself and so this is essentially a move on from the local error handler for the logout command from last episode. Except this episode we are turning it into a global error handler. Now there are some that you want to ignore. Like possibly commands.command not found or user input error. So quite simply there is a nice big list on the discord.py documentation site with all of these listed and the relevant use cases but these are some errors that you can simply ignore because they don't uh, affect you really and so we will return if the error is any of these and then quite simply we just move on to the next part and that's where we begin our actual error handling so the first one that I want to actually discuss even though we don't have any cooldowns in our code as of yet is command start cooldown. So essentially what this means is that when a bucket type cooldown is tripped this if statement will trip. And so the way that is instance works in Python is it's a function that returns true if the specified object is of the specified type. Otherwise it is false. So essentially you just pass in whatever this is here which is the specified object and then if it is this type here it will return true and trip the if, otherwise it will just get, continue on. And so essentially what we're doing here is, thanks to one of the mini docs developers for this code, mine was quite a lot simpler, but essentially the way this works as well with uh, div modern python, is you pass in these two values, so error.retry after has a integer that it gets passed through, which is the amount of seconds to wait before you can run the command again. And so divmod takes a pair of numbers and then it returns a tuple consisting of how many times it's been like divided in and then the remainder. So essentially to get minutes and seconds, we're gonna take the total amount from error.retry after, which will be in seconds, divided by 60 to get minutes. And then whatever is left over will be our seconds and then so on to get the hour and the minutes. And then quite simply, we're just going to do a, a few if statements here to check the values so we can write out the right string and then send it out depending on which it is so you must wait x amount of seconds x amount of minutes and x amount of seconds and so on and so forth and then we also have a commands.check value and i'm just bringing this one in because this is essentially the same one that we used for the logout command last episode except now it's global so it will apply to any command and so then quite simply we just send a message saying hey you like the permissions to use this command and then we also raise the error so that we can see the error in the console and rather than just have it pop up here we can actually see what's going on Let's do the traceback all of that for debugging yeah, debugging purposes and so our other change for this episode is going to be embeds and that's going to take effect in our statistics command now before i dive into this I will go over a full overlook, which is in this nice little file up here, which showcases everything. 
So quite simply, you just set a variable to discord.embed and then you set whatever you want. So let's say we want a title. You just put title equals and then your message in here or variable type and you can support markdown in there as well, which is quite a good feature. And then we can also set a color. Uh, this is also a list to color if you want to do it that way. And then you just pass in discord.color, RGB numbers, X, whatever you want. You can set a URL for the embed and also a nice description which supports named links on top of the markdown subset and you can also use new lines in all of these. And the timestamp will take a date time object in any format and it's also in a weird timestamp. So you know with Discord how it sends a message and then you look at the timestamp it goes today at 2pm, yesterday at 11am, that type of thing. If you put your timestamp, you put your date time object in here, it will do that for you. Which again is quite some, a nice feature. And so moving on, now that we've got our variable set, you can do the variable dot set image and you can set that to a URL or you could do a set thumbnail, set that to a URL as well. Now with thumbnail and image, you don't get to set the position or size or any of that. So just bear that in mind. You can also set the author, which is just in a pop-up saying the name of the author. You put a URL icon URL to their profile picture, say bot.user.icon URL, and it just pops up with a nice little profile picture for your embed essentially, which is actually quite cool. Then you can also set a footer, which goes on the bottom of your embed. And that also supports icon URLs as well, which is quite nice again. Now probably the most used part of embeds is actually adding a field. Fields do take a name and value per requirement. You have to pass a name and value in. And if you don't, it will error. Now you can add as many of these as you want. I think there's a limit of 25, but that's all right. So you can add as many fields as you want and put your variables and things in them. And there's also a nice little third part called inline. So essentially the way that works is if you have it set to true, they will all be displayed like this. But if you don't have it set to true, for instance these three embed fields here will go one field here, two field here, three field here. Whereas if they were all in line set to true, it'd go field one here, field two here, field three here. And you can just play around with that and figure it out for yourself. Now scrolling down to send that. You just simply set and send. You set embed to your embed variable and then you can send content which is just how you've normally been sending your string up to now. And also, while we're on this, if you want to send a file to Discord, simply you do you do have to set it up like this. But you can either set the image as a local attachment like so and set it up as attachment hello PNG with your path being your path to the image. Or if you want to simply just upload a file to Discord, set a variable to discord.file and then the path to that file, and then you can simply go file equals your file variable. And that's that. Now let's jump back over to our actual bot where we're using the embeds in our statistics command and take a look. So we're going to set the title to our bot's username and then put stats, so it's going to go Minudocs.py statistics, essentially. And in the description, you might have this weird thing that you're wondering what this is. This is a blank space character. So if you want to say, have something there, but not have something there, if you get what I mean. So say, let's say, let's say you have to set name, you have to set value for embed fields. If you don't want something in the value field, but you still have to set it, use this. It's a blank space character, so Discord accepts it. Uh, but you don't see it. That's essentially what happens. And now we're also using our bot.version that we defined earlier up here as a bot version for our statistics command. I'm setting the footer to this nice little phrase down here. And the author is going to be set to our bot's username as well as the bot's profile picture. Now with the color for this embed, I'm just setting it to the current author's color. So essentially the color that they get from their highest role in the server. 
and then we're just going to send that to Discord like normal, embed equals embed within ctx.send. And that's essentially it on changes for the code. So let's go southern our token and we'll pop over to Discord in a minute. Cool. So I've just gonna put our bot token into our bot and run it. So let's just play the help con. We will see that nothing has changed. We've added no new commands and the events don't show up. So let's just run the stats command and take a look at our new event. So you'll notice my highest roll with color is media team, which gives me this nice color here, and our embed color matches that. And then our author is clearly displayed here as the bot with the bot's little profile picture in there. Here's our title and the black space character there. And then you'll also notice our fields with our values. This now tags me without actually tagging you. And then we've got the little footer down the bottom, which we've put in there, as well as uh, a weird timestamp currently telling me it is uh, after 3 a.m. So what happens if we jump to the code and change it real quick? So this is just a fix up. You will need to set inline to false rather than to true, as uh, that's currently how it works. So with inline set to false, and we just run the bot, we will notice that it will separate it. It will be the only field on that line. So essentially, we've got the field here, and since inline is set to false, this is the only field on this horizontal plane. Now, I've also put the blank space character in here, so you can see what I mean. So bot version is no longer there. It's a blank space character, so it's simply just a blank line. And so inline equals true is this. Inline is false when it's like this which is pretty cool if you ask me. So while we're at it, let's log the bot out. You'll notice it works perfectly fine. We're not raising any errors at the moment. So what if I just quickly undo all of this and then remove myself as owner of the bot? Let's go trip some errors, shall we? So if I try run the logout command now, you notice that our error handler has been tripped. And it's just said, hey, you lack the permissions to use this command, which if we have a look at our code, is a commands.check failure trip. Now, if we take a look at our actual console, we'll notice that the error has been raised. So it's giving you this nice big trace back. But since it's handled via Discord and it's raising uh, permissions check failure error, we don't need to worry about that because it's not something we need to debug. But it's just telling us that you do not own the spot. So if someone's tried to run the command, and you don't own the bot. Which, in my opinion, is pretty cool. And raising errors allows you to just log the errors, essentially. And so that is, for this episode, essentially it. I'm not showcasing the images or anything currently. But, if you want to just go and do that yourself, uh, you need any help, feel free to come ask in the relevant MenuDocs help channels. We're always there to help, provided you've got your code and errors and you've actually given it a go yourself. And until next time, have fun, happy coding, and go out there and enjoy yourselves.